Initial Configuration of a cPanel Server, Part 2 This tutorial will continue with the initial configuration of a cPanel Server. Click the Account Functions icon. First, let's take a look at the skeleton directory. The skeleton directory is the default directory structure that is used to create the structure of the accounts you create. Click the skeleton directory icon. This is the system path to the location of the skeleton directory for the root user. To modify the skeleton directory, you simply create the directories, then upload the files you want copied to new accounts into this location by using either a FTP or SCP program or from the shell. Unlike skeleton directories for resellers, the skeleton directory for the root user is not accessible via the file manager. For security reasons, it is also recommended that FTP access be disabled for the root user. It is recommended that you use a client that supports SCP to facilitate file transfers to directories that are only accessible to the root users such as this one. Next, let's add the account for our primary domain. Click the Account Functions link. Click the Create a New Account icon. Enter the domain. Enter a username. When we clicked on it, WHM auto-populates the field with a value based off of the domain. We can change it to an alternate username of our choosing. Enter a password. Enter an email address. Select a package. Since we have access to WHM as the root user and can manage all accounts that way, we will not be granting reseller privileges to the domain user for our primary domain. Since this is a new server and due to the fact that there shouldn't be any existing zones for this domain, this option isn't necessary, but we will enable it anyway. Click the Create button. Next, let's add the DNS records for our host name and name servers to the zone for our primary domain. Click the Home link. Click the DNS functions icon. First, let's remove the separate zones that were pre-configured for these entries. Click the Delete a DNS zone icon. Because there was no zone for the domain when the server was provisioned, individual zones were created for the original host name and the name servers. Since we now have a zone for the domain, we're going to remove these zones and then add the records we need to the zone for the domain to avoid conflicts. Select the zones to delete. Hold the Control key to add additional zones to the selection.
click the delete button. Click the delete button. Now let's add the records we need to our existing zone. Click the DNS functions link. Click the Edit DNS Zone icon. Select the zone to edit. Click the Edit button. Since our name servers are currently registered to point to our previous name servers, WHM automatically added A records to point them to the corresponding IP addresses. After the site for our domain is migrated, we will be changing the registration to point IP addresses on this server. Let's change the records to point the IP addresses that they will be registered to when we update the name server registration through our registrar. Now let's add the A record for our host name. When editing DNS records, fully qualified domain names that are meant to be absolute references should be terminated with a period following the top-level domain. Names entered without a terminating period following the top-level domain will be interpreted as relative references to the domain for the zone that contains it. WHM will allow you to enter a name as the destination address for an A record. This is bad form as relating one name to another name should only be done by using a C name instead. Now let's add the record for SPF to our zone. If you remember from part one of our tutorial, the Sender Policy Framework, or SPF, is a system developed for mail servers where DNS administrators can define what servers have been authorized to deliver mail for a particular domain. Email servers that are configured to check SPF will often reject email from a source if the relaying server isn't explicitly authorized in an SPF record for the sender's domain. For more information regarding SPF, refer to the following website. TXT records are used for SPF. Since we will also be hosting email for this domain on this server, we will want to leave this checkbox checked. If we were hosting email on a different server, we would uncheck it. Click the Save button. In this demonstration, we added the record for SPF to our primary domain after the zone was created. As we mentioned in Part 1, since all of your domains will need SPF records, you will likely want to add the information to the zone template so that the record for SPF is created when each zone is created. A demonstration of adding the information to the zone template can be seen in the following tutorial, Managing DNS in WHM. 
You will also want to have the pointer or PTR record for your primary IP address set to point to your host name. These are also referred to as reverse DNS records. Reverse DNS records, or PTRs, are maintained by the primary provider, so you will need to contact your provider to request it. Some email hosts will also reject email from mail exchangers where the PTR does not resolve back to the host name of the relaying server. Click the Change System Mail Preferences link. Many services run on the server as the root user, so system messages related to these services will typically be sent to a mailbox for this user. The mailbox for this account is not accessible via webmail or by using a mail client. Let's configure the system to forward these messages to an email account on the domain so that we can check via a webmail or client-side application. Enter an email address. Click the Change button. Click the Change System Mail Preferences link. Apache, the web service, runs as the user Nobody, so system messages would be typically sent to that user. By default, WHM is configured to forward these messages to the root user. Since we are forwarding the root user's mail to a new address, let's update the nobody user's email to be forwarded directly to that same address instead of being double forwarded. Click the Change button. Click the Change System Mail Preferences link. cPanel runs under the cPanel user, so system messages related to that service will be sent to that user. Let's configure those messages to be forwarded to the same address as used for the previous two users. Click the Change button. Click the Contact Manager link. Here you can configure what events trigger alert messages to be sent to a user. These alerts will include information about that event, the methods enabled, if contact data for that method has been entered, and the priority given to the messages that are sent. Click the Save button to save any changes. Click the Home link. Click the SQL Services icon. Next, let's set a password for the root MySQL user. Initially, there is no password set for the root MySQL user. As this user has full access to all databases on the server, leaving this blank is considered a security risk and therefore is not recommended. Click the MySQL root password icon. Under normal circumstances, we will not need to remember this password to be able to connect to your SQL services. Should you need to access the database as the root user, you can simply reset the password. Let's use the password generation tool to generate a secure password for the root database user. 
click the Generate Password icon. Here you can customize the criteria used to generate the password. Click the Regenerate button. Click the Use Password button. Click the Close button. Click the Change Password button. Click the Home link. Now let's look at the IP addresses bound to this server. Click the IP Functions icon. Click the Show or Delete Current IP Addresses icon. Click the Home link. IP addresses will be assigned by your hosting provider and are usually assigned in contiguous blocks. Your server should be pre-configured with all of the IP addresses in the initial block already bound to the server. Additional IPs that are ordered will likely not be in the same contiguous block as the original set. Congratulations! You now know how to set up the initial configuration of a new cPanel server.